Well, Chrissy, I have loved just digging into songwriting, talking about uh, relationship with the Lord, and something that I really wanted to impart to our young songwriters and to those that have a passion for writing uh, is how we can grow our relationship through songwriting. So yeah. at Gateway Church, the purpose of Gateway is to help people develop an intimate relationship with God. Mm. And so we want to write songs that are born out of that intimacy. But I've also seen that the process of writing songs can take people to a deeper level of intimacy. Mm -hmm. And so I want to hear what that's looked like in your life. And I really want an impartation from you because this is, this is what you've walked. Mm. This is your journey. And I want our songwriting team and our leaders to see that. Mm. So share a little bit about intimacy with the Lord and that songwriting yeah. process. Well, I just told somebody last week, a young songwriter, I said he, he was kind of tearing up after one of his songs was played for the first time and he said well you know almost apologetically well this song means a lot to me mm -hmm. i'm not sure where it's going to go beyond me um but i pulled him aside i said listen if it means something to you and mm -hmm. if it was birthed out of intimacy other people can feel that when you when you share it when you go to share it and really um it is interesting because it's an individual thing, but yet it's a community thing at the same time, as far as that writing process mm -hmm. goes for me. Mm -hmm. So um, in the mornings, I'm spending time with the Lord, and that's one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm plugging into the Word, and I'm praying, and I'm, uh, I'm journaling, and I'm singing the Psalms, and all of those things mm -hmm. are happening in the morning, and that's really exercising that muscle um, and really then usually later in the day I'm in a co-writing situation yeah. and that's where things shift a little bit because um, then we all get to talk about Jesus mm -hmm. and we get to hear other people's stories and then we get to weave it in with what he's done in our life and it creates this beautiful tapestry that I couldn't have created by myself even yeah. with my own story. Um, so it's almost another level of intimacy. It's like a community kind of intimacy. Yeah. And then we share it. You're right. And then we share it. And um, other people with different stories hear different things. Yeah. It's really amazing how God works that way. But it all starts with one-on-one -on -one intimacy with the Lord. And, um, you know, songwriting is a draw for a lot of people. Yeah. So they think it sounds cool or fun to try um, writing a song and it is but um, I think what a lot of people especially those that are writing worship songs find it's almost shocking to them that's a back doorway of the Lord getting to their heart yeah. that they weren't expecting wow. and I really think that when it gets down to the bottom of it that's what it is that's what songwriting is I think that I think this is important to catch if if you're being drawn into songwriting Part of that may be the Lord mm -hmm. actually wanting to draw you into deeper relationship with Him. Yes. Because in order to write songs, uh, there are some specific ingredients that you talk about. Right. And you have this great word picture of a pantry. And I can almost see the Lord, like, I can see Him kind of knocking on the door. And He's like, how am I going to get into David's heart? Or how mm. am I going to get into Christy's heart? Yes. And if I can capture their heart in songwriting, and yes. then I can grow a relationship with them through songwriting. Mm -hmm. So what are some of those ingredients that the Lord uses to take us into different, d uh, deeper relationship with Him, but also to write songs? Yeah. Well, I mentioned some of them earlier, but yeah. I'll, I want to unpack a couple of them because it's a little different, I think. Um, as time has gone on and as I've grown in my relationship with Him, but one of those ways is two-way journaling for me. Mm. And for a long time, I would pray, I'd always pray, and the Lord would speak to me, you know, kind of here and there, he'd drop a line in my heart and I would hear him, but I didn't know that he would actually answer me back. Mm -hmm. Not in a real time kind of a way. Like I would pray and, and then I think I'd wait. Sometimes it is real time, because <laughs> I even read is. in your book how there yeah. would be a moment where you would, you would just create space. Yes. And not, not every time, but sometimes in those exact moments, yeah. the Lord would drop something. I mean, it. That's intimacy. Yes. That's relationship with the Lord. So I'm, I'm not meaning to interrupt, but I'm just no, I'm blown no, no. away. Yeah. The two-way journaling, we have a two-way relationship. And we've been yeah. talking about this in worship as a whole. 
worship is two ways. We right. are we are worshiping the Lord, yeah. but He's doing something in us as we worship, yes. and He wants to put things into us. And and there there's freedom that comes in worship, and healing that comes in yes. worship, and there are things that when we're in His presence. He manifests and does things that only He can do. Yeah. But you can do that in your quiet time. Yes. And journal. So I love this. Keep going on this two, yeah. two way journaling because when I first read it in the book, I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's a no brainer. <laughs> I know. It seems like it yeah. would be. But it actually shocked me when I started hearing Him speak back to me. Mm-hmm. And it would happen when I would literally just put my pen on the page. Wow. Then I would hear Him. So it was almost like this step of faith. Like you have to take the first step. And he'll call you to walk out on that water sometimes. Just put your foot out or put your pen out. And then, boom, suddenly download from the Holy Spirit. And I hear him. And it's changed my life, honestly, some of those days. Mm -hmm. I will say not every day is a life-changing day. (laughs) Um, And there is a discipline that comes with that sort of a practice. You know, you show up. You just Mm -hmm. show up. But then there are the ones that will carry me for seasons Mm -hmm. and that actually shape my life that I never could imagine not having now that I've experienced those moments. And it really creates a a hunger. You Mm -hmm. you just stay hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, you stay hungry. And that's the point. You want to always stay hungry in that relationship. So, of course, reading the Word. Mm -hmm. But that two-way journaling and then psalming is the other thing. Yeah. That really, um, I've learned more about worship through singing the psalms than anything else. I get more song ideas from singing the psalms than anything else. Mm -hmm. I've learned patterns. Um, I've seen just structure. Like there's a psalm, I don't remember which one it is, but it outlines what you need to have in a worship song. Um, wow. And even in the Psalms, it says, sing a new song. Yeah, It's absolutely. in the oldest songs we have. It says, sing a new song so yeah. we won't forget. Um, there's so much that is packed in there that I still feel like I'm learning Unearthing things. and excavating yes. and drawing out and exegeting from the yes. Scripture. Yes, and it does oh, two man. things. It's teaching me songwriting. Mm-hmm. But the other piece is it's, it is shaping my heart simultaneously. Wow. Um, and I've really fallen in love with David, you know, like just as a Bible <laughs> yes, character. Yes. And um, I'm pretty sure he was a four like me. <laughs> now, <laughs> if the I four were to guess. is more on the prophetic side, or what is creative, the four? Creative slash emotional. Slash emotional. Okay. I have a lot of feelings, David. Well, and I see that in David's writing. I mean, you will see exuberant joy, and then you'll <laughs> yes, see you like do. the depth of depth. Yes. Yeah. And the pain and the anguish. So I can see that creativity. But it's yeah. interesting because I also see a, a prophetic gifting on your life as well mm. to hear from the Lord and write songs that the Lord is speaking in that season. So yeah, it's crazy. The creativity, but also the ability to hear and to share and to write. And I love, I love that he lets himself feel all those earthy feelings. Mm-hmm. But I also love he always circles back to praise. Yes. Always. Yes. So, you know, you might be having amazing things happen in your life. You can worship about that. You Mm -hmm. can have, you know, some tough things going on in your life. You can still worship about that. Amazing. So I love that about him. So uh, I'm thinking through even, I don't know if this happened in one of those two-way journaling sessions, but Mm -hmm. there was uh, a word picture the Lord gave you of you as a little girl carrying buckets filled with living water. Yeah. Yeah. So share more about that word picture, because I think even with our songwriters and, and as the Lord is honestly trying to capture your heart through songwriting, he wants mm-hmm. to go into a deeper relationship with you. Receive that. Realize that even just the act of songwriting, he wants to be in a relationship with you. That's why he's drawing you in. Uh, but then on the flip side, share this picture of what it looks like to carry buckets of living water to mm-hmm. people in need. Yeah, it was it was definitely one of those two-way journaling sessions where he was showing me this picture and he he was telling me how, you know, that I sometimes wear myself out bringing people water <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes people dump the water out. Yeah. And it's yeah. and it's hurtful. It's frustrating. Because they don't realize what the gift. I gave them. Mm-hmm. But um but he called me his water girl. Wow. He said you're my water girl. And as I started to unpack that, and I started to ask him some questions, 
it was a really interesting conversation um, because I asked him, Lord, what is that bucket? Mm -hmm. What does that represent? Mm -hmm. And he said, for you, um, you contain songs. That's, that's the kind of bucket you are. That's the container you are. Wow. That's what holds what I give you to carry. And then I asked him, Lord, what is the water? What am I carrying? And he said, truth mm -hmm. for me. Truth is what you carry. Now, crazy enough, um, and this could be a long story, so I won't go all the way there, but I found out about some family heritage yeah. when I was on a recent trip to Scotland. Um, and my the family name that I had um, several years back was Guthrie. And okay. uh, the Guthrie family motto is, we stand for truth. And so wow. it just helped me to realize, even just reading that and then remembering what the Lord said about water and buckets, like sometimes what we carry is a generational mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's just something new that the Lord starts with us. But in that moment, I realized, wow, I'm actually carrying something that he poured into my ancestors. Wow. And, um, and so I know that's a part of my songs. I know that's a part of why, you know, mm. why these things are coming out of me the way they do. And it's interesting because sometimes we can't even describe right. why right. we just feel so strongly yeah. and we can't maybe describe it. But um, I think we carry, you know, songs of generations in our blood. I think so too. Mm. Um, you know, there's so much generation to generation to generation in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And God's very intentional to track the generations and to track the genealogies and to give that to us in his word. Yes. And, and you see, you can, you can physically see the, the generational curses go down the line. Right. And you can see the generational blessings go down the yeah. line. And so I think when I get you back in the studio, I want to talk next time about um, some of the, even maybe the boulders that people wrestle with. And we call it freedom ministry here at Gateway. Wow. But what are the what are the generational iniquities maybe? Mm. What are the word curses that may have been spoken over somebody? What are the lies that we believed? Mm -hmm. So we'll have to save that for another okay. video. Um, but I, I think the thing I would want you to, to pick up the most from this <laughs> is that the Lord wants to be in relationship with you. Mm. And that if he's using song writing as an opportunity to dig in, I almost want you to see that as the Lord he cares about you so much that he would use any bucket, any tool. My yeah. wife is an artist. She does watercolor. She mm. does oil painting. That's her bucket. Yeah. She uses that to carry living water to people. Yeah, right. And she does graphic design and will design wow. something that will help carry living water. Wow. Um, there are people who are teachers. There are people who uh, are gifted at just in serving and laying their life down. There are people who are gifted in, in writing. Whatever your bucket is, realize that the reason the Lord gave that to you is A, so you would draw closer to him, mm -hmm. but then B, that you would take his anointing to the world. Thank you yeah. so much, Chrissy. Yes. You're amazing. Oh, thank you so much for having me.